In the first volume of Birds of Western Ghats, we saw how birds produce certain sounds and the manner in which they do it. We shall now try to understand the motivation behind these calls and try to classify the calls accordingly. Let us start with some illustrations. Every creature is equipped to meet its need to communicate with others. Let's have a look at the blooming red silk tree offering its cornel red flowers with a promise of sweet nectar at their core. A tempting sight, no doubt. But their purpose is not to entice human senses. But in fact, it is the tree's purpose to advertise its nuggets for consumption by insects and birds. The tree is seeking to communicate with them, inviting them to come and carry out an important function. The feeding creatures would inadvertently transmit the tree's pollen to other places and further its process of procreation. Let us not mistake the tree's gifts for selfless generosity and mere aesthetic creation. These flaming bright flowers are a part and parcel of nature's sign language. The beautiful plumage and feathers of birds, their enticing notes and calls, are all attempts of communication with other beings. We can classify the sounds of birds according to the motivation behind them. These specific calls are produced only in the breeding season. Their motive is to announce the bird's dominance over the specific breeding territory and also to allure the female. The breeding calls are produced only by males. The duration and variety of his calls indicate the competency which is directly related to the food he gets from the selected area. Certain birds such as the Asian quail and Oriental magpie robin sing only in the breeding season and stop singing once the season ends. The would-be parents build their nests during the breeding season as it is the most promising period to find a secure place for nesting and to have the possibility of abundant food. The breeding call may be further subdivided into breeding songs and breeding calls. We describe monotonous sounds as calls and sounds containing a variety of notes are fancifully called songs. The call of the Asian coil, for example, is usually named as a song. But this is only a poetic metaphor. Scientifically speaking, this is a breeding call and not a song as we would like to believe it because one note is repeated over and over again without any variations. Let's hear a fine example of the coppersmith barbet's breeding call. Scientifically speaking, a bird's song has a more complex structure and it tends to have an array of notes. A very familiar example would be of the magpie robin. What a variety of notes does the call offer? It's no surprise that we are tempted to describe it as a song. <laughs> 